the third intermediate period. So remember what an intermediate period is in the Egyptian chronology. It's where there is no sole ruler of Upper and Lower Egypt. So the kingdom is divided by many rulers, all um, claiming to be um, the pharaoh. Now, this period of time is 1069 BCE to 653 BCE. So between 416, 420 years. Um, the term pharaoh really now means ruler rather than being um, what it used to be, which was the great house of the whole of Egypt. It's now be, become a, a term as a leader, as a ruler of a specific area of Egypt. That's how I, I interpret this particular time. The, it's lost, it's lost, it's not as a powerful statement as Nebtawi. Nebtawi is the ruler of the two lands. Remember the term Pharaoh was used by the Israelites, the Hebrews, to describe the leaders of Egypt. So it's a foreign term which Menrepta, who was the son of uh, Ramesses II, adopted it. He has assimilated it into his titles. Um, and then from that time onwards, it had a meaning of being um, a, a ru ruler, um, a leader, um, a figurehead, rather than meaning the whole of Egypt. So in this uh, third intermediate period, you've got lots of dynasties. <laughs> In fact, you've got everything, including the kitchen sink. So you've got the 21st dynasty, the 22nd, the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th. So let's start with the 21st dynasty. Um, it's uh, a family from Tanis. Uh, they establish a cult of Ammon there, and it's located in Lower Egypt. Next one is the city of Babastus, which is the 22nd dynasty, and their main deity is the god Bastet. And we're looking, and that's really a, a Libyan dynasty. Libyans who settled in Egypt maybe one or two generations ago have now created their own dynasty. And these dynasties are all ruling at different times during this third intermediate period. Some overlap with each other, so you, sometimes you get two or three or even four pharaohs ruling different little parts of Egypt. Then we come on to Heraconopolis. That's um, uh, a city in sort of uh, middle, just below Lower Egypt, sort of Middle Egypt. They uh, worship uh, Sapes, which is a ram deity. And they are, you could say, Libyan, you could say a mixture of Libyan and Egyptian. And then you have the city of Sais, which is the 24th dynasty, and they worship the goddess Neith. And she's the one that has that, um, is represented by the red crown. And that wordy bit that comes out of the crown is her fire, her power, her energy. Now, with these four dynasties ruling from the north of Egypt to Middle Egypt, below them you've got the high priests of Amun. So remember they established themselves during the, the latter part of the 20th dynasty. And many of them were generals in the army. And they used the high priest of Amun as an oracle to give make laws. So remember, only Pharaoh and gods can make laws. So that's why they took over that role uh, uh, as high priest of, of uh, uh, Karnak, because then that gave them the access to make lords. That was their mandate to rule uh, Upper Egypt and parts of Middle Egypt. The priesthood of Amun's authority is really from Elephantine up to sort of mid, most of Upper Egypt, parts of Middle Egypt, and then you've got the disputed territories. So from one reign to another, uh, a power can change backwards and forwards in Middle Egypt. But you've, those, that's the situation in, in the two lands. So most of these pharaohs are ruling from the north and parts of Middle Egypt. 
but the priesthood of Amun is there from 1080 BCE, so they've been around 11 years before this third intermediate period, and their power starts to wane around about 943 BCE. There is another dynasty, which is the 25th dynasty, the dynasty of Moreau, and I will de deal with that in a separate video, because that's the Kushites. The Kushites have finally got organised, and they go on the offensive. We'll deal with that later on. Now, in this third intermediate period, with these uh, four dynasties, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, um, plus you've got the 25th, and then um, eventually you get the 26th. Now, there are roughly 32 kings. So I'm going to just focus on the most notable of those kings in these different dynasties. So in the 21st dynasty, at Tanis, we have Basunas the first. He ruled Egypt for, well, he ruled his part of Egypt for 41 to 46 years. And he was looking out, uh, outside of Egypt from the north into what was happening uh, in the Canaanite, the Byblos areas, Syria. And he could see that the Assyrian Empire was on the rise and it concerned him greatly. Then comes uh, uh, the king of Tanis, Amun Emmeb, who ruled Egypt for nine years. Now I've included him as being notable because he had a, a gold mask for his mummification. And remember what a mask is for. It's a device to allow a spirit to enter a mummified body and to stop other spirits from going into the body. Don't call it a death mask or else. They didn't make them when they died, they made them when they were alive. That's the difference. A death mask in other cultures was made at time of death. Okay, but in Egypt they made these devices before they died and they had a practical purpose. Let's move on to the 22nd dynasty. And Shishak the first. Sometimes in the Bible he's known as Shishak. And he attacked Israel and... Uh, supposedly looted the temple of King Solomon and took all the treasures back to Egypt for himself. That was around about 943 BC, BCE to 922 BCE. Then in this 22nd dynasty we've got Azarkan the second. Now he's notable because he became an ally of Israel. So he ruled Egypt 872 BCE to 837 BCE and in 853 BCE they took on the Assyrians and they fought against the Assyrians in Gaza. So Israel and Egypt are allies along with some of the other Semitic states to try and stop the Assyrians. But it didn't work. They lost unfortunately. Now, the 23rd dynasty is most notable for, that's at the city of uh, Babastus, um, the uh, god Bastet rules that city. Harases in 880 BCE to 860 BCE. He became the independent king of Waset, which is what the Greeks called Thebes, and today we call it Luxor. So they created the independent state. What's interesting is that Tanis, which was the city of the 21st dynasty, set up a, a duplicate uh, oracle of Amun. So you had the uh, high priest of Amun at Waset. We've also got high priest of Amun in, uh, in Tanis. So Heracles becomes the independent king of Waset, but there's also high priests of uh, Karnak being appointed by these northern kings. So they've ousted the long-standing uh, priesthood of Amun and are now appointing their own high priests in Karnak. So you've got a high priesthood of, uh, of Amun, which is at uh, Tanis, and the high priesthood of uh, Amun, which is in Karnak. The Sayas dynasty, the 24th dynasty, um, the most notable really is uh, Tefnacht. 
He ruled Egypt from 732 BCE to 725 BCE. He had seven year reign and his reign was quite uh, controversial because it put him into direct conflict with the new rulers of the 25th dynasty. Now I hope this information has been uh, helpful. The third intermediate period is uh, very tricky. Um, my um, advice to you is if you're interested in this period, do some additional research. Um, you can line up the kings that were all ruling in different parts of Egypt at the same time. And they're quite a bunch, that's for sure. I think cities allowed their leaders to call themselves pharaohs because it gave them prestige. So if you've enjoyed this uh, video, please press your subscribe button. Thumbs up if you liked it and uh, please leave any comments and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.